Hi all, today we are going to discuss about a MD Yagi laser. In the playlist of laser, you can see the videos related with the, the principle of laser that is stimulated emission of radiation, requirements for laser that is population inversion, pumping methods, uh, metastable state, uh, optical resonator, two level lasers, three level lasers, etc. ND Yagi laser is a very popular laser because of its huge applications in industry and medical field. ND YAG. ND stands for neodymium. It is a rare earth element with the atomic number 60. YAG stands for yttrium aluminium garnet Y3Al5O2. YAG is a transparent crystal with high thermal conductivity high mechanical strength and good optical quality. So, ND Yaga, in that this neodymium ions are doped in the Yaga crystal, where Yaga crystal is a host lattice. That means it is not participating in the laser action. So, the active centers in this ND Yaga laser is neodymium ions, ND3 plus ions. Neodymium atomic number is 60, so ND3 plus ions having an atomic number 57. So, the laser rod here is ND3 plus ions doped Yaga crystal. Why Yager crystal? Because it is having high thermal conductivity. So most of the heat energy produced there can disperse by this Yager crystal. Now about the construction of this ND Yager laser. Here we have an elliptical cylindrical cavity. In an ellipse we have two focus. Along the one focal plane we have the laser rod that is neodymium doped Yag crystal and along the other focal plane of this elliptical cavity we are using a krypton flash lamp here the krypton flash lamp we are using for the optical pumping for the proper laser action to take place we required population inversion here the population inversion is achieved by pumping method Indiagi laser is a four level solid state laser. We have seen in another video that for solid state lasers, the preferable pumping method is optical pumping. In that, we are using a light source and the light flashes are incident on the active medium, thereby these uh, active centers from the lower level are exciting to the higher energy levels. Now, here we have the krypton flash lamp. So, the krypton flash lamp will provide the necessary optical energy to the laser rod so that the active neodymium ions from the lower level can excite to the higher energy levels. Here we have kept the Ndiagi laser rod and the krypton flash lamp in the elliptical cavity. Why elliptical cavity? Because it have two focus. Along the one focus, we have the ND Yagi laser rod, and the other focus, we have the krypton flash lamp. So, the light starting from this krypton lamp can get reflected from the walls easily and it can arrive at the other focus where we kept this laser rod. So, that uh, maximum light energy can be utilized for the pumping of neodymium ions from the lower level to the higher levels. At the two ends of this laser rod, we have two mirrors. One is a partially reflecting mirror, other one is a 100 percentage reflecting mirror. This perfectly reflecting mirror and this partially reflecting mirror together constitute the optical resonator. We have seen in the previous videos how this optical resonator is important for the light amplification. So, ND Yagi laser is a four level solid state laser. Here, the pumping method we are using is optical pumping. The active medium is neodymium ions. Here, the YAG acts as a host lattice in that this neodymium ions are staying. The output here we will get is 1.06 micrometer, that is 10,600 Armstrong. For that, we can come to the discussion of energy levels and transitions in ND Yagi laser. In the previous video, we have discussed about helium neo laser. It was a gas laser. 
But here, this ND Yagi laser is a solid state laser. In gas laser, we have discrete energy levels. But apart from gas laser, in solid state laser, we have energy bands. In ND Yagi laser, we have energy bands. Note the discrete energy levels that we have seen in the helium neon gas laser. Energy bands means in that energy band, it will split into various energy levels. Here, this is the energy level diagram of neodymium ions because neodymium ions are the active medium here. When the power supply is on, the light flashes will come from this krypton flash lamp and it will incident on this ND Yag laser rod. So, when the neodymium ions are getting proper optical energy, the neodymium ions from the ground level will pump to the higher energy bands that is E4, E5, E6. This E4, E5, E6 together known as pumping bands. From E4, E5, E6 energy bands, the neodymium ions are making a fast non-radiative transition to the level E3. Non-radiative transition means that is not giving any output. This E3 energy band acts as the upper lacing level because this E3 is a metastable state with a lifetime of 230 microsecond. Metastable state means it is a state in that the active medium can reside there for a longer time. So, this neodymium ions will reside at this E3 energy band that is at this upper lacing level at this metastable state for a longer time. So, that the population in the E3 level will increase. Why E3 is a metastable state? that we have seen in one of the previous video. Metastable state means is a state in that the active medium can stay for a long time because the transition from the metastable state is forbidden because it is not allowed by the quantum mechanical selection rules. So that the uh, probability of transition from the E3 level is low. That means the neodymium ions can accumulate easily in this E3 level. The accumulation of this neodymium ions in the E3 uh, upper lacing level will produce a population inversion between E3 and the lower levels. So, when the population inversion will achieve, that will produce a stimulated emission of radiation. So, the stimulated emission of radiation will take place between E3 and E2 and it will produce a coherent beam of light that is having wavelength of 1.06 micrometer or 10,600 Armstrong that is in the infrared region. So, here the upper lacing level is E3 energy band and lower lacing level is E2 energy band. So, upper lacing level E3 is a metastable state. Now, when this neodymium ions are reaching at the lower lacing level E2 that is having a uh, small lifetime of around 30 nanoseconds so, it can get de-excited to the ground level even by non-radiative uh, transitions. So, this is a simple explanation of ND Yagi laser. That is, when the light from the flash lamp is incident on the ND Yagi laser rod, the neodymium ions from the lower levels are exciting to the higher energy bands. From the higher energy bands, it makes a non-radiative transition to the energy band E3, which is the upper lacing level. It's a metastable state so that the population inversion is achieved between E3 and E2 and it will produce a laser radiation of 1.06 micrometer by stimulated emission of radiation. From the uh, E2 level, uh, the neodymium ions are easily de-exciting to the level uh, E1 that is ground level by a non-radiative transition. Here I have labeled this E1, E2 up to E6 with some spectral terms of 4i, 9 by 2, 4i, 11 by 2, 4 of 3 by 2, etc. How this comes? So in detail, if we examine the neodymium ions that is having an atomic number 57, we can write the electronic configuration that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, etc. And in that we can see that in the outermost shell, we have three electrons. 
these three electrons will constitute a total spin of 3 by 2. Each electron having a spin 1 by 2. So, the three outermost electrons in the neodymium ions will constitute a total spin of 3 by 2. So, while studying the electronic configuration of ND3 plus ions, 4I and 4F are important for the lacing action. What is this I and F? That comes from the total orbital angular momentum quantum number, ST, DF, G, HI, etc. comes from the orbital angular momentum quantum number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So, 4I and 4F. I means orbital angular quantum number 6 and F means total orbital quantum number 3. We have a total spin of 3 by 2. So, the spectral term we can write as 2S plus 1 Lj. It requires some knowledge of the uh, spectroscopy. A spectral term we are writing by 2s plus 1 Lj, where s is the spin angular momentum quantum number. Here it is 3 by 2. L is the based on this orbital angular momentum quantum number. This J is the total angular momentum quantum number that we are writing as from L minus S to L plus S. I'm not going in detail to the spectroscopy behind it. So based on this configuration, we have various terms of 4i 15 by 2, 4i 13 by 2, 4i 11 by 2, 4i 9 by 2 because of the configuration of L minus S to L plus S. So L plus S means 6 plus 3 by 2 that will come here as 15 by 2. L minus S is 6 minus 3 by 2 that is 9 by 2 and in between these terms. Similarly from 4F that is with the orbital angular quantum number 3 and the spin quantum number 3 by 2 we are getting this J L minus S to L plus S as 9 by 2, 7 by 2, 5 by 2, 3 by 2. So these are the terms here. From the 4F, we have 4F3 by 2, 4F5 by 2, 4F7 by 2 and 4F9 by 2. From the I term, we have 4I9 by 2, that is a ground level, 4I11 by 2 and also we have 4I13 by 2 and 4I15 by 2 that I have not shown in this energy level transition diagram because in for us, the important levels are 4F3 by 2 and 4I11 by 2. That is E3 here corresponding to a spectral term of 4F3 by 2 and E2 here corresponding to a spectral term of 4I11 by 2. So, in ND Agi laser, if we study with the help of these spectral terms, uh, I have written on the right side the terms for E6, 4F9 by 2, E5, 4F7 by 2, E4, 4F5 by 2, E3, 4F5, 3 by 2, E2, 4I11 by 2, E1, 4I9 by 2. I have not shown this 4I15 uh, by 2 and 318 by 2 here. That is also there. I have not shown this because our dominant uh, laser is 1.06 micrometer. That comes from E3 to E2. That, what is this E3? E3 is 4F3 by 2. E2 is 4I11 by 2. Other range laser radiations are also possible here from 4F3 by 2 to 4I13 by 2 is producing a lambda of 1.35 micrometer and also from 4F3 by 2 to 4I9 by 2 is also producing a laser radiation but those uh, laser probability percentage is very less. Our dominant laser output is 1.06 micrometer laser that comes in the infrared region. So, this is the working of NDR, the solid state laser. Here in symbol, we are denoting these energy levels as E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6. In detail, if you are studying, we can denote these bands with the help of the spectral terms. That comes from the term 2S plus 1 Lj. For that, we require some knowledge of the spectroscopy, how the orbital angular momentum, spin angular momentum and total angular momentum, we are writing based on this electronic configuration. ND Agi laser is a four level laser system. Here we have so many energy levels E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6. So when we say a four level laser system, that doesn't mean that only four energy levels are there or only four levels are participating in the lacing action. Equivalently, we can consider as a four level system. 
here all these e4 e5 e6 pumping bands together constitute the fourth level e4 this upper lacing level e3 that is a metastable state is the third level lower lacing level e2 is the second level and this ground level e1 is the lower level so by the optical pumping method the neodymium ions from the lower level are exciting to the fourth level from the fourth level it makes a non radiative transition to the third level which is a metastable state so that a population inversion is achieved between the third and the second level that will produce stimulated emission and thereby we are getting the laser radiation again from this second level which is having a very small lifetime the ions are making a non radiative transition to the even level so that's all about the construction and working of ndr laser